Today is about nothing new. In fact, I want to do a line that I've liked for a long time and I've noticed in the past couple of months more and more people are speaking about it so I thought I'd put in my two cents and give you a different point of view from somebody with more mature skin or somebody whose skin is on the drier side. So let's get into it. I am The Hooded Lid and welcome to my channel. Today is Focus on by Terry. As always, I like to start with the foundation. This is the Densilis, but the title's longer than that. It's called Densilis Anti-Wrinkle Serum Foundation. They say it is a second skin and that it targets fine lines and wrinkles in two ways. One, with blurring components, and two, uh, toning over time. And apparently it stimulates the production of collagen I can't say I saw anything in here that actually stimulates collagen, and that's a pretty hefty claim, but we'll go on. And they say it's light to medium coverage. I have seen on some websites saying that it's a full coverage. Uh, the By Terry website is the only one that says light to medium, so let's give it a go. Shake! They say pea size amount. This is one pump, which I guess is a pea size. It's a teeny bit runny. But I do have a serum foundation, and it's far more runny than this. So I'm not sure I would say it's a serum. It feels, um, you know, thick. It's not running down my finger. And today would be a good day for test of coverage, because I did a laser last night, and I'm a little bit red. And always, I much prefer fingers. I bought this last April, and it was one of those purchases that weren't, it wasn't necessarily because it made my skin look like something I've never seen before, but it was more like I was in the mood to buy something. Have you ever done that? Or you're like, well, I feel like buying something, and this is good enough, as good as anything else. Not that I don't think it's pretty. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't think it was pretty, but... It wasn't like, ooh, magic. I'm in love with it. And I haven't used it very much because the color is a little light, and I think right now is the best time of year for me to wear it. Lately, I've just been mixing it with my Ethereal List, which is a little bit too dark. Um, the shade range isn't fantastic. It's 12 shades, I believe. And the undertones are a little strange because, well, one of the reasons I like this, as a French brand, it doesn't have those egregious yellow tones to it. This one has a rosy undertone, but I don't think it looks particularly pink. It's just, I don't look yellow. And the next one up is a peachy undertone, I believe. So the tones are a little different, but if you find that Foundations made in America are just orange or yellow on you. I think looking at the French brands might work out for you a little bit better. I know, I feel like I've had more success with Japanese and French and, well, European than American brands. All right, from this mirror, I'd say I look pretty even and it looks like a solid medium coverage and the finish is the teeniest bit shiny. It's funny because I shot this yesterday but there was so much noise and as I speak, here goes the truck. Let's talk about the Densilis concealers. I've had these for a long time. They were my go-to for quite a while and then I kind of ventured away so it's coming back. I don't remember these as being full, full coverage, and they are expensive. They're $69, but I'm getting to that point in my life where I might be having to make that decision. Do I want to completely obliterate any darkness? Just to be clear, I have not found a concealer that does that, but I'm looking. Or do I want something that is just not going to make my creepiness look worse? Something that's not going to dehydrate me? 
And that's what this is for me. I'm going to take the darker color now because this is a little bit too light for me and I don't want lightness on top of the puffiness. So I'm going to put it right down here and kind of work it up and out. All right, so looking in this mirror, I can't say full coverage, everything's obliterated, but it's also not making me more crepey. It's not dehydrating me. So for older skin or drier under eyes, I think this is a really good choice. This isn't perfect right here, but I think I can finesse with this and maybe get a better look out of it. You know what this is. This is the By Terry powder that I adore. I've been using it for three years. And even though this is a small container, smaller than, say, the Laura Mercier, I still have... I bought a backup two years ago thinking, well, I'll be done with this soon. I use so little that I, I think I have months and months left on this. So I'm just going to powder where there's a little bit of shine and where I'm going to be putting some bronzer and blush and the chin. I feel like I still have some radiance, but I'm not as shiny. So let's get into blush or bronzer. I haven't decided. I've mentioned I've liked this brand for a long time and I have found that a lot of these products are not available currently. You can find a lot of them, you know, stock that is probably not sold out yet. So I'm going to talk about them anyway. This is the blush and this is solid. This is metal. It is a big amount and it reminds me of this by Chantecai. The Chantecai is plastic though. So even though this reminds me of an Elsa Peretti from the 70s, I really love this. But this is just solid. It's weighty in the hand, and there's a lot more product in here. This is the color, and look at that quilting. I love that. When I bought this, it was my go-to. It has a bluish undertone. It's kind of a mauvey pink, and I think works well for my skin tone in the fall and in the winter. And it is so smooth and delightful. So pretty. The color is Nude Dance. I think it's number three or number four. It's just subtle and fresh and pretty and these are the kind of colors I like on my cheeks the best. I feel like I need a little bit of pinkness in my cheeks to make me look like, you know, I'm not dead. This is their Sun Palette number two, and it is definitely not in production anymore, but I have seen a couple of Sun Palettes. Again, probably old stock. I saw one at Netta Porter, but this is so neutral and so lovely. I think it just, if you are fair, light, light medium, which I consider myself, it's just enough. It's just a kiss without being too much. I like to put these two together for my bronzer. This color here appears to be matte, and if you want this to be more shimmery, you can dig into this one. But this is radiant, and I'm just going to go for a very subtle look, just to bring a little bit of life to the face, top of the cheekbones, top of the cheeks and over the bridge of the nose. The sand of the trash is actually a relief after the sound I was getting yesterday. But I think I'm going to have to cut away. So I'm going to do my brows and I'll be right back. Brows are done. Let's go into the eyes. I'm going to go into this palette. I'm going to use the darkest shade first just to recede the hood. By Terry has a very well-known cream product. It's a stick called Black Star. But I have sticks like that in Laura Mercier and in Bobbi Brown. And 
they just don't really float my boat, so I don't have that by uh, from by Terry. And their palettes, I've only seen one of them in real life, and I just didn't. I could admire the colors, but I really couldn't see how I would be able to make them work. It didn't seem like a complete palette to me. It was more about a bunch of colors. But this is new for me. I've never used a bronzer around the eyes. I know that a lot of people do it, and I think it's about time I gave it a try. Not bad. Nice soft look. I'm going to go into this color, which is a highlighter color. It looks rather peach. I just want to get a little bit of reflection on my lids. So let's see. Well, I know how it's going to work out because I did shoot this yesterday. And then I'm going to go into this blush color. Since I didn't use it on my face, I want to give it a little bit of love and get the most use out of this. And I'm just going to have that on the hood. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I think that's a very nice, basic, everyday, easy eye look. And I don't know why they stopped with these palettes. I feel like, actually, Bud Terry has made a lot of changes. And I think some of them are good. Some of them I really didn't understand. And some of them I think are bad. And let's get into that. <laughs> what a weird intro. Lips. I have a lot of lip products from Bud Terry. And... One of them, the best one of them, is Discontinued. These are their lipsticks. They are terribly densilous. They are so beautiful. They're opaque. They require swipe, swipe. You're done. And they're so comfortable on the lips. Probably, and I'm not exaggerating, the most comfortable lipstick I have. And they're no longer making this. I guess it's not the trend anymore. If you can find some old stock somewhere and a color that you like, and I did see one somewhere, I can't remember where, get your hands on it. I guarantee you, if you are someone like me where lip glosses can be too sticky and, and lipsticks can be too tightening or too heavy or you don't like the dimethicones, these are so lovely. But I'm not going to do those since they aren't officially still around and I have to pet my dog now. This is the one gloss I have from them. I'm not going to put it on because this was a mistake. They had this in two colorways and I, sh I should have gotten the warm one and I should have returned it when I saw it, you know. I'm like, no, it makes me look dead. It's just not a great color for me. Um, but I thought, well, maybe I could use it on top of something if I'm going for an all-lavender look, and I, I've never used it. So that was a mistake. But aside from that, I do feel that it's a teeny bit, a teeny bit sticky. It's not horrible, but for me, you know, I'm so fussy about that stuff. Not my favorite formulation, which is to say there's no formulation that I particularly like in glosses. Now they have two new products right now. They come in this funny looking bottle with little windows all around. One of them is matte, one of them is glossy. The colors are really nice, but I found, I bought twice and returned twice because I loved the colors so much. One of the matte ones, it's just too drying. I would put something on first before I put it on and I just couldn't handle it, but I loved the colors. In the matte department, however, these clicks, and I have one more that I left upstairs, these are wonderful. They have a teardrop shape, so you really don't have to line your lips. You can get a very sharp application with this. I think the teardrop is pretty genius. The color range is pretty mellow. I mean, it does go into from nude to red, but it's missing those punchy things that I really like, like the corals 
and their new formulations kind of hit those punchy areas. So I do, I wish they would kind of up the game. But these are matte, they are really light, and they're so comfortable. They are not long lasting though. So once you click this out, you can't retract it. So don't go ham, click, 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 because you're gonna jam it into here. But let's go in with this one. It is such a pretty, easy, wearable nude for me. I really love it. I'm going to put it right here in my nude pile and not bring that back upstairs because I forgot about it. Okay, some mascara, some lining, and I'll be right back. So that was Pat McGrath Blitz Brown, and this is the Hourglass Film Noir, the mascara from Hourglass that no one ever talks about, but I think is pretty brilliant. And I think that's pretty much it. I really like this look. I think it's a fabulous day-to-day -day look. It's pretty fast. If I wasn't speaking, I could probably do this in maybe 10, 15 minutes, and yeah. I'm gonna put down my hair. Do, 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 do. I don't know, I, maybe it's the blush pink sweater, uh, the time of the year, the color of my skin right now, but I really like this look. It feels, very soft and it has a quote unquote, I hate it when I do that, I have to stop, but it has that kind of natural look about it. So it's obvious, it's apparent I'm wearing makeup, but it doesn't look like a lot of makeup, it doesn't look too much. I think great for work, um, maybe too much for picking up kids, but I really like it. It's just soft and pretty and easy. So there you go. If you can find this, and I really kind of regret I didn't get more than one. I, the bright ones are very compelling to me. But, you know, I like that color. It doesn't mean I would have been able to use it. But if you can find one, do it. This foundation is very, very comfortable. So, as I said, I did shoot this yesterday, and the sound was really bad, so I'm reshooting it. It was very comfortable all day. For me, it's long wearing, but most things are. I don't have a problem with things breaking up. And I really like the color selection because it's not like American color selection, so it's not egregiously orange or yellow. But if you do fall into the orange and yellow, you might have a hard time getting a match. But if you're like me and you have a hard time with the American things, I think it's worth it. It's so comfortable. If your skin is dry, and remember I did my uh, laser last night, it's covered up that redness and it's not giving me that tight feeling that the Guerlain gave me. Really, really like it. If you have oily skin, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that'll work out for you, but m normal to dry, give it a try. The concealers, it's not full, full, full coverage, but it's okay coverage. And it doesn't make my eyes look more crepey, as many do, and it doesn't feel like it's dehydrating. So I'm going to, I'm not 100% in love with the application. I'm keeping these out and I'm going to play with them with the Pearl and with the Laura Mercier um, regular primer and see if I can get um, a nicer look out of these because I have them. <laughs> the powder, you know how much I love this powder. I don't think I need to speak any more of it. This blush, it's staying out. It's the season. It goes on so smoothly. It loads your brush pretty heavily if you, if you dig in. So just be a little careful with it. But I think they only have a few colors in this anymore and now they have a half and half where it's called blush and contour, except some of them look like blush and blush. It doesn't look like blush and contour. Each one is different, and I imagine the formulation is probably the same. I think they do powders so well that blush is worth it to me. And these matte click experts or expert click mattes, they're so comfortable. They are matte, but they're creamy, 
And if you like that mattish look, I had a uh, gloss on beforehand, but if you like that mattish look but you don't like how uncomfortable mattes can be, absolutely lovely. And I love that teardrop shape. And there you go. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Maybe I gave you some ideas. Thumbs up for the foundation, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I hope you come back again. In the meantime, I'm wishing you a great day.